Hello everyone and welcome to Royals at the Ranch for Thursday, April 21st, 2022. In previous episodes, I've discussed the importance of making a list of what your expectations of your snake are before you bring a Python Regis into your home. And in last week's episode, I went over how important it is to have a conversation with your breeder and ask them questions about the snake's behavior and temperament that you're considering adding as part of your family. It's extremely important that you ask them to do a few simple things so that you can get a feel for if the snake that you're thinking of adding to your family is on the shy or bold end of the temperament spectrum, if they're particularly defensive or if they're curious and attracted to novelty. I did exactly that when I picked out this snake, Phoenix, from Canova Reptiles. I had Summer do some temperament tests with her, and then I had her do some simple environmental stimulation, handling and enrichment exercises while she was waiting to be shipped to me. I picked her out because she seemed particularly curious about novel objects, novel experiences, and seemed bold compared to her clutch mates. That's certainly proven to be true. She was able to go straight into a three by two by two black box cages enclosure. She uses all of the space. She excels at target training. This session is the first time she's seen this particular station and she didn't shy away from it. She was curious about it and I do apologize for the camera angle. I didn't realize until after I filmed the session that the station itself was blocking the session. But after she hesitated a little bit to investigate the station, she re-engaged with the target and followed it. In contrast, this snake, Finn Rao, who also came from Canova, I just picked out at random and said, hey, I really like the way that that snake looks. I'll take that one. And I was just basically rolling the dice on what his temperament would be. We didn't do anything to check that out ahead of time. And he's turned out to be fairly shy. He's not super fearful and defensive, but he's shy. You see that he's in a tub setup, similar to what he would have been in at Canova with just a few enrichment items. He does utilize this space, but he's definitely not ready for more. And he came here eating only live, and it took him about six weeks to start eating frozen thawed. He engaged with the target training very quickly and was always really, really curious about the food items. And he got to the point within just the first week or two he was here that he would move to the target, he would nose around the food, but he never would quite eat it. So you see me feeding him now, and this is how I fed him the last couple of times, and it's worked really well. I've just placed the food on the target and left it in the enclosure with him. And after quite a while, it's gone. He seems really, really... um, nervous about eating like maybe the food's going to get him or something and he was like that when i was doing the target training and directing him as well he would engage in the target and move right towards it but then he would get really nervous around the actual food item and kind of tremble and shake and he would approach and retreat it numerous times and so what's working best for him right now is leaving him in this um, enriched tub setup leaving the food in there with him on the target and I come back after a few hours and it's gone. And so I really think that he just needs to build up his confidence around the food item itself. And since he was eating live before, it's possible that was a stressful circumstance for him. You know, maybe interacting with the live prey um, made him nervous or defensive, I'm not sure. He isn't nervous and defensive when I engage with him. He tongue flicks at me. I'm able to lift him out of the tub and put him in some exercise spaces. And he doesn't ball up. He doesn't act defensive. He doesn't hide. He doesn't try to escape and avoid. But he's not super interactive with them. He kind of just sits wherever I put him and tongue flicks and moves just a few inches. So he's a pretty reserved snake. Now, this is Buffy, and she came from Reptile Genetic Services, and I again chose her at random because I wanted a pinstripe. And I have the luxury of being able to do that here because she isn't my only snake. And if she showed up and ended up being a snake that um, didn't suit my expectations, that's okay because I have other snakes that do, and I'm able to work with her based on who she is as an individual. 
But if you're picking out a snake as your only pet or one of just a few pets, you definitely want to make sure that their personality and temperament is going to meet with your expectations so that you're not disappointed with the animal through no fault of their own. Now, Buffy is very engaging. She's not particularly fearful. She also arrived here eating live. I don't feed live here, but she did just fine starting off on Frozen Thawed right off the bat. Now, I had Ben Morell and his partner um, showing her a target disc prior to feeding her, even though they were feeding her live. And you can tell that she made that connection because I show her the target disc here and she understands that she's going to be fed. She hesitated for a few seconds the first time that I offered her food because it was frozen thawed and not live, but she did eat it within just a few seconds. And then her subsequent feedings have gone very, very quickly. She hasn't figured out that she's in a front opening enclosure. And so she was pushing on the lid of this Exoterra tonight. And I opened it up for her to come out and do a little exploring. She's not super bold and curious and adventurous, but she does come out from time to time and want to explore around the area of her enclosure. And I do have two sides of the enclosure covered, but surprisingly, she spends most of her time around where the open glass is, and she likes to sit there and look out. Buffy and Finn Rao were both about the same age when I got them from the two different breeders, and they were both exposed to some environmental stimulation and enrichment prior to arriving here. It's just that Buffy is a little bit more bold and curious about novelty than Finn Rao is, and you take your chances when you randomly pick out an animal without doing any prior investigation into their behavior and temperament. Now, this snake is Boba Fett, and I did ask about his behavior prior to getting him, and his breeder told me that he was an extremely active snake who liked to come out whenever his tub was open and explore, and that they really had to keep an eye on him because he would take off. And I have been thrilled with this snake. He wants out of his enclosure quite a bit, which that's a lot of fun for me. He isn't fearful of handling an interaction with people. He's not fearful of things going on in the normal household. He spends quite a bit of time in this activity tent because I can't always watch him every second. And the other night when I asked my husband to watch him, my husband fell asleep and Boba Fett disappeared. And I found him on top of the ceiling fan just hanging out. So from now on, instead of asking my husband to watch him when he's out of his enclosure, and this is Boba Fett's regular enclosure, so it's pretty complex in and of itself, but he spends time in an activity tent if I can't keep my eye on him. He's just an amazing snake. Uh, the breeder was honest about his behavior and temperament and very accurate about that. And so I can't encourage you enough to have this conversation with whoever you're thinking of getting your Python Regis from and try to make sure that the snake you get is going to fit your lifestyle, is going to fit your expectations, and please tell whoever you're getting the snake from to be honest with you. If the snake is defensive, they should tell you that. If it's inherently shy, they should tell you that. If whoever you're getting the snake from is willing to do some of the simple temperament checks that I've outlined in previous videos, like opening the tub or enclosure and letting you know what the snake does when they're left alone to do whatever they choose, or opening the tub and enclosure and letting you know what the snake does when a human approaches and just stands there next to it, or when a novel item is placed in the tub, or if they've taken the snake out and placed it in a novel environment, how does the snake react? If they're not willing to do that, just ask them to let you know, how does the snake behave when you do normal feedings and cleanings? How does the snake behave when you have to handle them for some reason? Ask them if the snake's been exposed to any type of environmental stimulation or if they've been exposed to anything that they're likely to encounter in a home living with people and any of the normal activity that they're likely to experience in a home living with people. The more things that you can be told about the potential snake that you're getting and how they react to these different circumstances, the better chances are going to be that you're gonna get a snake that's gonna fit in with your household 
and that's going to meet your expectations. And that's really important because we want the snakes to be with you for the lifetime of the snake. It's not going to be good for the snake's welfare if they're constantly being rehomed because their humans aren't happy and satisfied with them. If you're adding your new snake family member based just on how they look, it's just a toss of the dice as to what kind of temperament and personality you're going to end up with. It's well worth your time to investigate temperament, personality, and behavior, and adding your new snake family member based on that and not based on how they look.